This here is my current editing and gaming PC. And this is a clean slate. Time for something new. I try to put myself in the shoes of a general consumer because that's where I was, that's where I started. And I was very frequently flipping hardware early on in this channel just to keep the, the, the channel lively, just to keep the, you know, the builds fresh so I wasn't reusing the same stuff over and over. And uh, in the spirit of not reusing the same hardware, we're gonna be swapping from my Intel rig to an AMD one. I kind of want to move away from Intel for a bit because I've been having some stability issues and I want to see if I can replicate those with the AMD platform. It's not Windows 11 dependent because I was, I was seeing the same thing with Windows 10. It might be the card and the drivers associated with the card. I, I can't really figure it out. And I've tried to get this on film, but every time it happens, I'm not ready for you know filming. So basically the, the Explorer will just crash. Black screen, it'll look like that for like 10 seconds, nothing on my monitors, and then things will boot back up again. And it, it happens so inconsistently that I, I can't really figure out what's causing it. So that's one of the reasons why I want to start clean here. Uh, the other issue with this rig is that this cooler from ID Cooling is a bit weak. And this is just, this is totally my fault. I really like the way this cooler looks. I wish it was a bit larger, uh, but for a 13900K, it's, it's not really enough. I have undervolted and underclocked the CPU just a tad and temps are in check. But again, I'm losing out to some performance here. It doesn't make a ton of sense to use this cooler. I'm also in a position now where I need a few more USB ports at the back of my motherboard. And uh, yeah, this one isn't really cutting it. It only has seven and that's a bit that's a bit you know, sparse for a Z790 motherboard I think so we have a bit of disassembly and rebuilding to take care of in this video the only thing now that I think about it that we'll be recycling in this rig is the DDR5 it's a low profile kit from Corsair and I think it's gonna be compatible with our larger tower cooler that we're gonna be using for the new platform if I don't see any repeated you know black screens like I have been with this rig then if I can fit it I'll try to throw in the RTX 4080 in this one uh, just to see if that's the issue. I have a feeling it is maybe a graphics driver issue or just a card issue specifically, uh, but I, it's very difficult to troubleshoot software. So we'll try our best. Are you ready? Stay with me. To get rid of that annoying Windows activation watermark, head on over to VIP SCD key. Purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for a fraction of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window and say bye bye to the watermark. And be sure to use our offer code SKGS for a so sweet discount. So, like I said, the only thing we're gonna be recycling from this rig is the DDR5, so I might as well go ahead and take that out now. Super good looking kit, if I do say so myself. I think I'm gonna go with the N7 B650E from NZXT. I just realized it only has one additional USB port from what we're starting with, but at least it's something. And of course, got our DDR5. We've got an MP600 Pro XT, two terabyte. That's gonna be my storage drive. It's a Gen 4 NVMe, very fast reads and writes. Uh, and that will work, I think, very nicely with this motherboard. We're gonna use a Dark Power 13 850 watt power supply and then a Dark Rock Pro 4. I'm not entirely sure how well these two are gonna get along, but uh, I'll pin something in the comment section if it doesn't work out. Oh, and I just forgot, I actually am recycling something else from the old rig, my games drive. This is a two terabyte SSD and uh, yeah, it has all my games on it. It's very nice and convenient to just like migrate this from rig to rig and not have to reinstall all of my games, which you can imagine would take quite some time even with a fast connection. I don't expect that this is what's causing the black screens, however, because, well, this is just idle oftentimes when it occurs. Let's go ahead and kick things off with our BBM. It stands for Big Beautiful Motherboard, by the way. This socket looks familiar, a lot like Intel. It's LGA now, which means the pins are in the socket, so be extra careful. We're gonna gently drop ours in here. DDR5 is up next. Remember, we have four modules to take care of. And there we are, looking real good. Now I think I'm gonna leave this heat sink off since we already have a fairly beefy one on our NVMe. And check out how beefy this thing is. You can see why I wanted to remove that stock heat sink. This one already has a uh, very large one equipped. It looks like part of the board with this color scheme. Now just taking care of these standoffs for the cooler support, then we'll be able to put this entire thing in the case. Drop it down nice and easy then. And I think we will have just enough clearance here yeah, look at that, for that RAM, 
This is a sweet fitment. And the second fan is going in. Now the Landcool 205 mesh seat looks really good. You can see it's got a fully meshed out front panel. It's got plenty of space inside, although it is slightly more compact than your traditional mid tower. It has seven PCI slots at the rear. I think that might be what the C stands for. You get a cable bar toward the front there. You can fit slightly oversized ATX motherboards if you wanted. Uh, although you're not going to have much clearance below the uh, standard nine standoffs. We've got a basement below. You can remove the included hard drive cage and then have a really long power supply if you wanted. A cutout there for your graphics card cabling and then plenty of cutouts elsewhere. Although you don't get rubber grommets, which is one of the reasons why this case was a bit cheaper than the competition. It does, however, come with three RGB fans, one 120 at the rear and two 140s at the front. I've already removed those. However, I'm just gonna run some uh, Silent Wings 4 fans from Be Quiet. My only real concern is probably cable management. There's not a ton of space behind the motherboard tray, but it does look fairly clean back here now that we've got the three fans out. Uh, you can see we've got an included RGB and fan hub, so you can run uh, both of your sets of cables into this. That's really nice, helps clean things up a bit and look at all that space down below. We're gonna run a fairly large power supply again in that uh, Dark Power 13 down there. Just don't mind the mess. Be honest, are you one of those clean as you go type guys or uh, do you just like let your whole room get super trashy while you're building? I, it depends on the time of day for me. We're gonna gently drop in our platform here, being careful to mine the standoffs. Gonna use the cutout at the rear as a sort of guide. Oof, and I already see a potential issue. I don't think that's gonna fit. That is either gonna touch the glass or will be too tall for the glass. So let's go ahead and do a quick test fit now. Might as well get this out of the way. The moment of truth then, yeah, I, I really don't think this is gonna work. Wow, it's touch, it's touching perfectly. I don't think we're gonna have an issue with vibrations, especially with these higher end fans from Be Quiet, but uh, it's almost like this, <laughs> this cooler and this case are made for each other. Holy cow, I can't believe how close that is. And with the basic wiring taken care of, we can now move on to the PSU. That conveniently rhymed. Just when you thought power supplies couldn't get sexy. Look at that, they even gave us some sweet, sweet peel. I'm gonna slide it in from the right side here. Ooh, that is, that is a perfect fit. Come on now. Oh, yeah, it's just super snug. Holy cow. Alrighty, and we'll tighten things down. Don't wanna forget our gain storage drive and slide that in off to the side just so it's sort of out of the way. Power things up. Also don't wanna forget our SATA data cable. Gonna add several fans to this rig, including a 120 mil at the rear, which ooh, is gonna be a tight fit. Holy cow, tolerances in this case are pretty thin. I'm gonna throw two 140 mils up top. The bracket in this case, by the way, is removable, which is nice, so we've got those two secured. Easy does it now. Gonna get everything else here wired up, including obviously the 24 pin. And we've things looking fairly clean back here. Oh, come on, zip tie. Come on now. There we go. We've got several of these holding everything together and I'm only going this hardcore with it because I'm a bit afraid of how much actual cable clearance we're gonna have here with the right panel on. Now, I'm still undecided about the graphics card. I don't exactly know what I'm gonna do. Um, I, I really don't wanna recycle the 4080. I'd like to move on to something else. The issue is I, I a lot of the programs I use, including the entire Adobe suite, is CUDA accelerated. So I actually do benefit from using an NVIDIA GPU in those regards. But in games, I, again, I really don't care which way I go. Um, I tend to lean a bit more towards NVIDIA just for the software stability, but I mean, I'm already having software issues as it is with my old rig, so I don't think it would hurt to go with a 7900 XTX or something. Uh, I'm torn. Now, I already know this is gonna be a super tight fit. In fact, oh my gosh, it barely slides in. Um, yeah, we're, we're cutting it super close here. Let's see, can we even fit fans up front? Yeah, yeah, we can, we can fit fans up front, but we're gonna be in the same situation that we were in with the H5 Flow. They're gonna be practically touching the front of this card. Um, I mean, it, it really does look good though, I gotta say. It looks really good having all this space down here filled out with a larger heat sink in this card. A lot of boring math later. Well, okay, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kinda sorta backtracking now and I'm second guessing myself. So I've actually ripped the motherboard clean out of that case, it's sitting right there. And I'm asking myself, do I really wanna have a CPU tower cooler touching tempered glass? The answer to that is no. 
I really don't. Long term, I, you know, who knows if you get vibrations and things, it's just, it's gonna probably annoy me. Uh, and I definitely don't wanna go with a 48. I, I, I wanna stick by what I said earlier. I don't wanna put a card like that in my case again. Now, I'm not really helping my case when I throw in a 7900 XTX, because it's still a really powerful card, probably more powerful than I need. But since I'm already switching to AMD for the CPU side of things, we might as well, just in a spirit of changing things up, switch to AMD for the graphics card as well. I, I don't think it's going to benefit me necessarily in Premiere Pro, but the rig is gonna be fast enough anyway. I think just sheer horsepower alone will keep me going. I, I'll be fine, I'll manage. I'm also aware of the other elephant in the room. Well, why not just swap cases then? If you're having a CPU tower clearance issue, just get a wider case. Heck, even the NZXT H5 flow that we're coming from is wider than the 205 Mesh C. But now that I've started building in this case, I actually really like it. I think for the price, it's a heck of a bargain. So I wanna stick with it just because I, I think it's a good case. And there are other cooling options we could go with. I think we're probably gonna end up going with an AIO, uh, but we have enough clearance up top actually that we could mount one up here and still have a little wiggle room down below. Phew, that was about three hours worth of off-camera part swapping. And I know it seems like I'm flip-flopping a lot. I'm just trying to get this right because once it is finished, I hopefully won't have to touch it for several months. And it's important that this doesn't stay down for any decent amount of time because I do use this to edit all the videos you see. I also game with it. Uh, so it's important that it stays up and running and functions properly. I swapped out the tower cooler, obviously for an AIO. This is an ID cooling 240 mil rig. Uh, and I swapped out the stock fans with some Silent Wings 4s because of higher CFM. And uh, the fin density in this AIO is actually pretty high. I was able to wrap the tubing around the block a bit, give it a little spiral effect. I think it looks fairly clean. Elsewhere, I didn't change too much. I put two 140s up front. I included some custom sleeve cables, actually some red accents in these, and I think that's gonna look really nice with the red accents in our graphics card, again, the 7900 XTX. And that card's not super beefy either. It only uses two eight pins, which is great. It's gonna come out to about here, so we'll have some empty space toward the front, and then we're gonna also slot in an Elgato 4K 60 Pro capture card uh, down below. So yeah, a lot changed, but uh, we're pretty much back to where we were prior to all of this changing. It just, yeah. Sometimes it happens. I'm not gonna act like I had it all figured out to begin with. That's cheating. Here we go then, the 7900 XTX, looking super sexy. Also, welcome to the red team. I guess this is uh, rather fitting here. I really hope this looks as good as it performs because I don't really have a plan C here. We're pretty much just uh, committing to a full AMD build at this point. Wow, that's like, very tight tolerance, okay. Something like that, why is this cringy? Just get on in there. There we go. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it looks good. The red in the cables doesn't exactly match the bright red in the card, but it's it's something. At least it kind of breaks up the, uh, the random color in an otherwise black build. Also gonna slot in our capture card. It's gonna be a bit close to our discrete card. Could lower it to the bottom slot. I really don't like the slot spacing on this board. If there was a slot in between the bottom two, that would be perfect. Connected our supplemental PCI power cables. I don't have them bridged, but they're actually staying rather tame right now, so I'll leave them be. There we go. I really like the way this looks, by the way. It's such a clean front panel. And here we are. What do you guys think? I think it turned out quite well. Um, I know it's totally like subjective, what you like and don't like, but considering I was expecting to have an air cooler in here and maybe a bigger card than what we ended up with, uh, I think we did a good enough job keeping things clean, keeping the exposed cabling to a minimum. I'm glad I included custom sleeve cables. Maybe would have liked for them to be like a royal red. Might change those in the future. They're just extensions, so they'll be easier to swap. But uh, otherwise, it, it's, it's good. It's probably not as good as the previous build, what we started with, but I'm happy with just the idea of swapping to something fresh, swapping to all AMD in this case. Excited to see how this will fare for me over the next six or 12 months. And remember, there's no RGB in this, so when we power it on, it should look pretty much the same way it does in some of these B-roll shots, which I was aiming for. It was intentional. I'm just tired of the rainbow puke. Frankly, I'm tired of even white LEDs. I just want my rig to work and not blind me while I'm gaming. So let's see if we did things correctly. We've got power here at the rear. We're gonna power the front. Uh-oh, that is books. What's up, buddy? Sorry, food is done. Oh, food is done? Yeah. Oh, well, guess what? I literally just finished building the computer. Oh. Yeah, see? So it's all ready to go now. You like it? 
Yeah. Looks pretty cool. Huh? I want to spin a fan. Oh, the fans are already spinning right now. It hurt the fingers. Watch I go. Ow, ow, ow. The ow. Ow, ow, ow. I guess I really didn't expect there to be white LEDs in the block. I couldn't tell if the block was semi-transparent or not for that very reason. And then I, of course, forgot there was a sliver of white in the 7900 XTX. I don't think it's in the 7900 XT. Just the XTX, I, I don't know. But it's subtle, it's very tame, not the end of the world. This rig is also super quiet. Thankfully not hearing any coil whine at all, especially at idle, which I was hearing in my old rig. That's a good sign. Uh, it's just, I mean, I haven't even calibrated the fan curves yet. It's just a testament to how quiet these Silent Wings fans are. Even when you place them over a radiator, the high CFM models are just really good at not only displacing air, but being especially quiet at the same time. Other than that, I think all we need to do now is install Windows and reinstall every single program I had on my old system. <laughs> That's gonna take a little bit. Like, I think it's healthy personally to occasionally reinstall Windows. You know, things get very bogged down, very bloated in the long run. You don't realize how many, uh, you know, programs you have running that you may not use anymore. And uh, often they can, you know, take advantage of resources in the background that you could otherwise be using for the programs you're using at hand. So, you know, starting fresh, I don't think is a bad thing. I tend to do it once every year or so, and it does noticeably speed up the system. When you have a fresh Windows 10 or Windows 11 install, it's just so much snappier than a rig that's been running for two, three years, especially if it has tons of programs already loaded on. So if I'm being honest, that's probably what I'm looking forward to the most here. I'm fairly experienced with the 7950X, not so much with the 7900XTX. Golly, these names are just throwing for what I really should have done is 7900X and then 7900XTX. CPU and grab, that, that would have been, that would have been the end of the world, but I will report back shortly. I'll let you know if the stability of the system is uh, is back if we're seeing any random black screens. I was noticing it mostly when I was video editing. So I expect that since we've swapped to all AMD, you won't be CUDA accelerating or anything like that. We're probably not going to run into the same black screens. If we do, then I suspect it's a Windows issue. But I feel like it would be more widespread. There'd be more reports of Explorer consistently crashing uh, if it was happening across multiple platforms and multiple hardware combinations. So we'll see. It's again just finicky software, but uh, hopefully we'll be back up and running without any issues. If you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Consider joining our Discord server. It's totally free to do so. If you want to support us on Patreon, you can do so via that link in the description. And I will catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.